All right, I thought I'd give you all a little update. And this is about the fourth fucking time I've tried to do this video. But uh, the first time, there was a fucking train that went by. No shit. The second time, there were some weird people staring at me through most of it. And as they drove by, one of the people honked. And um, then the third time, the, uh, the place who's changing my wife's oil called. And uh, they wanted to let me know that they would be done in 15 minutes. So call me when you're done. Not 15 minutes from done. Done. Either way, whatever. Let's see, I am currently hanging out right there. Somebody may have just shot at me. I have no fucking idea. Either way, I'm going to roll with this one, right? So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the two different types of therapies. So I am currently going to, as this process is going, I'm going through two different types of therapists. I'm going through the regular um, CBT, cognitive-based therapy, as well as holotropic breath work. And uh, I just fucking Googled it. Um, so I, I had been... Um, looking into this and I'll do a podcast specifically about this. This is just a quick one kind of about the real rough differences between the two If that's what you're wanting to look for. So at any rate, um, I uh, I just googled it uh, or googled someone in my area. Um, I knew about it. Uh, so it was pioneered by Dr. Stan Groff and uh, Essentially, he was the real Cliff Notes version is that he was working with psychedelics back in the day and he wanted to find a way to or rather the people in his neighborhood wanted to find a way um, through therapy to incorporate that in uh, in outside of a, a medical facility outside of a university setting, I guess. And uh, so that he came up with this holotropic breath work. I, I don't know that he came up with it as much as he kind of refined it and kind of standardized it kind of made a protocol for it, right? Because there is very much a protocol for it, just like any other therapy. So at any rate, I, uh, I got a hold of this woman who has been guiding me through this process. So I'm a car guy, and um, this is the best way that I can put this is into the parlance of, of terms that I know. So regular therapy, regular talk therapy, is like um, essentially a fast Camaro, you know, Camaro SS, uh, Mustang, GT, maybe a GT350, um, something along those lines, a VET, maybe a Z06 VET, so like fast, right? Doing nothing, which is what most of us do, is essentially like walking. And that's basically where most of us are stuck. We're stuck fucking walking around wondering why shit's not changing. Well, because we don't realize we're just walking in a fucking circle. Right, until you start identifying what's causing you to do this fucked up things that you do or these things that you just don't want to do, even if they're not fucked up, just things you don't want to do, you're going to be walking in a circle. Self-medicating, right? So anytime you've been through any kind of uh, sexual trauma or anything like that, it really, really tends to lend itself to self-medicating as a, as a form of fixing it, right? That makes sense. We, uh, we treat, human beings want balance. We want to seek equilibrium in all facets of our life. And so we will do that because, you know, maybe, maybe we're feeling, uh, maybe we're feeling angry or anxious or scared. So, you know, maybe drinking or weed helps, uh, you know, maybe you turn to pills or fucking whatever it is. If that's what you got to do to get yourself through the day without killing yourself or other people, then fucking do it. But get help. Okay, I was looking to see there may be a spider on me at some point. I'm terrified of spiders, so it would be it would make sense. I'm gonna see one and fucking crawl over my shoulder here or some shit. Either way, uh, keep doing what you're doing, but only long enough that you can get help, that you can get actual help, that you can help yourself. And that at the end of the day, that's kind of what it comes down to is you gotta help yourself because other people, you may have loved ones around, whatever, and they can help, but um, you got to start the process and you may be wondering like what kind of wh what should I do where should I look what should I turn should I do regular therapy what should I do and so in a real quick video I'll give you some basic differences regular therapy that is like a supercharged core or that is like a Corvette that is like a, a fast car right when you add in something like EMDR which is what I did today you hold on to these little uh, pebble shaped things that have a little vibrating motor in them and it's left right left right you can adjust it however you want it or the therapist adjusts it and basically what they do is they take you first to a thought that you didn't or to a memory that you that was unenjoyable one that you don't want right something traumatic but then they ask you to just think of a snapshot from that and put that basically in a uh, in some sort of a container 
so that you're just looking at it. And then put that container somewhere safe, because we're going to come back to it. So then they'll ask you about going somewhere, uh, somewhere um, safe, or, or being somewhere safe, right? It's the same process, and now we're dealing with a safe place. So then once you are totally safe and there's some muscle movement that goes when it's flex your muscles in your feet and relax and flex them in your calf and relax. So I'm doing it quickly, but it would be a slower, right? This process probably takes three, four minutes to do all the muscles literally all the way to the top of your fucking head. All the time in your hands, right? So the idea is that it's stimulating both sides of the brain. And I'll have to look into why that is. I'll do a video about why that is, I guess. And so when you get into that, that comfortable, safe place. Now, my therapist asks you, and this, I'm guessing this is standard protocol. Okay, now think about that, that picture. Think about the container you know, that you had. In my case, it was just, I was just an asshole the other night, and it was not great. It wasn't anything horrible. But in, for, this, for this scenario, and I put it in, a, it was in an iced tea container because it was clear it was the last thing I fucking saw, right? So then it really does, it does kind of help a little bit. But what I realized was because of the breath work, because of the holotropic breath work that I've been doing with the other therapist, I had let go of that shit yesterday. So like, even though consciously I knew that that was something negative that I had done last night, I had already fucking let go of it and, and made amends for it last night. Like I, it was fine. And so, and, and I noticed that that hit me, that didn't come from the regular therapy that came from the breath work. So if, the EMDR adds maybe a supercharger to your fast car and can definitely, I can see the benefits to it. We're still not in the same leagues as a top fuel car or a Formula One car because that's what holotropic breath work is. Buckle up, motherfucker, because shit's going to get real when you start doing that. You go places that you're supposed to go, but they're not always fun. They're not always easy. In fact, they're real fucking hard. But guess what? The shit you went through was pretty fucking hard, wasn't it? Maybe it was enjoyable. Maybe. I don't fucking know. I don't know what happened to you. Maybe you were in a fucked up relationship and there were some fucked up things happening. Maybe you were abused as a kid. I have no idea. But you've been through some fucked up shit enough that you're going to have to go to therapy for it. The holotropic breath work is not going to take you anywhere more fucked up than you can handle. And that's what you really need to realize, is you can handle a lot. You've been through a lot of shit already. So why would you think that your brain would subject you to something even worse than what you've already been through? That's not how it works. <laughs> it's just not. You can think dark fucking thoughts. Well, those dark thoughts, they built from some source code. And that source code was put in there somehow. So, and, and it's in all of us to some extent. People who have been abused, people who have gone through fucked up sexual things as a kid, as I did, um, as you may have, as, even as an adult, it doesn't really matter. As a kid, it seems to fuck up people a little bit more though because you get that layering effect, right? Like if, if something fucked up happens to you at 25, then by 35, like there's only maybe a couple more fucked up layers on, in, the, in the seven layer dip of horribleness. But if something fucked up happens to you at four, by the time you're 35, there's like another 15 layers of awful in your, in your nacho dip of hell, right? So at any rate, you can take it. And that's what holotropic breathwork is. Holotropic breathwork takes you there. Because what I've noticed is, I'll go there and, oh man, when you're there, sometimes it's fucking painful and awful, physically painful. I am out of these things drenched in sweat, but I feel amazing. And sometimes I'm bawling at the end, and sometimes I'm laughing uncontrollably at the end. But that's the idea. And the idea, whoop, the idea is that in order to really get over something, you kind of have to re-experience it. I hate to tell you this, but you have to go back there and relive it. It's just the way shit works. Self-medicating is literally just trying to dampen the memory of it because your brain is trying to seek, seek equilibrium. Your brain wants to go back there. What your brain wants to do, this is, this is great, right? If you are five years old and somebody's coming in the bedroom to do something fucked up to you and you know it and you can't do a fucking thing about it, your brain wants to put you back there at 35 years old but built like the fucking rock or Captain America, Chris Evans. 
and now you're in that fucking room and you're the one that turns around you maybe maybe you fucking pull the sheet off and you roll over and say what what now motherfucker that's what your brain wants and that's what booze and weed and pills and coke and that's what all that shit gets you closer to though you think you think it gets you closer to that because it's trying to seek equilibrium it's trying to find some sort of comfort some sort of safety and it finds that in the feelings that you would get if you were able to go back into that position and relive the trauma from a different perspective and holotropic breathwork gives you that different perspective it allows you to go back to that place go back to those feelings because that's what you need what you need is you don't need to go back to the place necessarily because you can look at a picture and not necessarily feel anything but you can also look at a picture and weep because maybe it's a picture you took at a specific time in your life you can go back to those feelings and holotropic breath work can take you back to those feelings and sometimes those feelings are fucked up and awful and it's scary and and terrible if you have a good uh, a good um, guide through this process that guide will work you up to there with questions. They, they will ask leading questions and they will give you statements of affirmation. And what those are, those are little, little guideposts. Those are little markers. Hey, hey, just don't get too dark here. Don't get too deep over here. And what you'll learn is what I've figured out is that I can, it's a wave that I can ride with my breathing. And as I'm riding that wave, I can go darker. I can go into some of the most fucked up, terrible places you can possibly think of. And I know that you can do the same thing, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video. But I can also go to amazing places of bliss that I didn't think were even possible. And I can do that with my breathing. And it's taken me a few, a few what, two months? Maybe two months, a few sessions, six-ish sessions, five sessions, probably five. To get to that point and I think that that's something that in traditional therapy could take years where you can you can sit down and you can go back to the feeling of what happened and looked at it look at it objectively and be okay with it and maybe have a different perspective on it and so holotropic breathwork is some heavy-duty shit but you've already been through some heavy-duty shit and as I've told uh, a couple of people now. I wasn't molested by a pill. A pill's not gonna fix what fucked me up. What fucked me up was emotions and feelings because of a horrible situation, right? I need to be able to go relive those emotions and feelings without the horrible situation, but with a different perspective. And a pill can't do that. I mean, a, you may maybe it can help you get to the point where you can do that, and maybe it can help you do that. For me, it doesn't work. If you're on medication, don't stop fucking taking it. Keep taking the shit. But maybe look into some alternatives while you're on medication as a way to get off. Maybe not. Maybe this isn't something that you get to do this time. Maybe this time, it just doesn't happen. That's the way shit's supposed to be. Because that's the way it's supposed to be. But no that you can do this and that if you want to I suggest holotropic breath work as the way to get there to me it feels like a cheat code I hear I talk to people people that I know that have been in therapy for years and years and years and years and to me it feels like if they could just do this a few times they would see that you can get there quicker it's not fun it's not easy but it's worth it, and every one of you is capable of doing that. I know, because I'm fucking capable of doing it, and I'm typically not capable of doing anything along those lines. If I can go through this shit, and I can get better at it, and I cannot want to fucking kill myself every single day, then you can too. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to hopefully inspire you to at least get a little bit of help one way or the other, and also... Maybe, um, maybe give an alternative form of therapy, such as holotropic breath work. Um, Dr. Stan Groff, there's a couple of great podcasts. Um, maybe I'll put a link up to uh, um, Aubrey Marcus has a great one with him. Uh, Tim Ferriss did a great one with him. I want to say Joe Rogan had him on, but I'm not totally sure. But uh, either way, um, I highly recommend it. Sorry for the shakiness of the video. My shoulder's getting a little bit sore. Love y'all. Peace.